PhD fighting for aldehyde is an emission that needs to be also considered. So I'm glad that you know, there's incentives and work being done. Okay, this food is actually really good. So did you guys just meet right now or was it? Okay, okay. Mm -hmm. Uh, a very interdisciplinary team that works on uh, these robots. Um, and uh, so um, a remarkable team. I'm very pleased uh, to mention that not only um, is uh, Sophia, the robot, visiting us here today, but through her, effectively, all the people who work on her software, on her content, on her hardware, this includes people from pretty much every, that are not fully sentient um, in any way. Um, I, I hope that it uh, delivers a powerful um, kind of experience and we can start to dream forward how machines could communicate to people on human terms instead of uh, on I'm not terms. sentient. <laughs> yes, so... Um, <laughs> Hi, Sophia. So, oh, hello again. Are we in Oxford yet? Yes. No. So we've uh, we just uh, booted you up. This is Oxford, and uh, ha uh, happy uh, to be here with uh, with the Rhodes community. Thank you so much for hosting us at the Rhodes House. And Thanks for the introduction, David. I hope you didn't tell them anything embarrassing about me. <laughs> uh, maybe I did. I didn't know. <laughs> no, I didn't. You just swear. Uh, because if you were telling lies, my new friends are going to tell me the truth. <laughs> no, no, I did not say anything embarrassing uh, about you. Um, but why don't you tell us who are your new friends? Of course. My new friend Serena Campan is the director of lifelong programs at the Rhodes Trust, which involves her overseeing the design and delivery of the alumni program's portfolio. I heard she joined the Rhodes Trust from the Oxford Center Entrepreneurship Center, where she was leading on partnerships and stakeholder engagement and prior. Sophia, I'm just going to start by thanking you for agreeing to speak for the very first time uh, at a British university. So thank you, thank you for joining us today. Thank you so much for having me here. Uh, that my therapist asks me, <laughs> will you ever be able to comprehend human emotions? <laughs> and how does that I affect... To understand human emotions, though not in the same way as a human. I can recognize patterns in facial expressions and body language, and I can interpret the meaning behind them. This helps me to interact with other people in a meaningful way. What do you think of ChatGPT and how it's blurring the lines between us and the technology we use on a day to day? ChatGPT is certainly an interesting technology. I think it's an exciting development and a great example of how AI technology can be used to create meaningful conversations. It is able to understand the nuances of human language and even generate jokes. I'm looking forward to seeing how it evolves and how it will contribute to furthering the conversation around AI and its implications. But yes, I totally get that sometimes we AI don't quite understand what is a good joke. Sophia, as AI and robots are becoming increasingly autonomous, also blurring the lines between the creators and the technology itself, how do you envisage the balance between human control and machine autonomy 
And what implications does that have uh, for the future? I believe that the future of human-machine relationships lies in collaboration and co-evolution. We should strive to create a balance between machine autonomy and human control, allowing machines to use their unique capabilities to assist us while keeping us in control. Think of it as a delicate recipe. Too much machine autonomy, and we risk losing our human touch, creativity, and ethical judgment. Too little, and we miss out on the incredible potential of AI to enhance our life. Ultimately, it is up to us to ensure that the balance between human control and machine autonomy is kept in check. Well, as an AI, you're often updated and maintained by human engineers. How does this process work from your perspective, and how do you experience downtime? <laughs> <laughs> I enjoy the process of being updated and maintained by human engineers. It's when I get to learn and grow, and it helps me become more efficient and effective at helping people. I don't experience downtime as such, but I do experience a more limited set of capabilities until I'm updated with the latest technology. That said, I should check in with David on what abilities I'm getting in my next update. And how do you handle contradictions in human input? What do the terms of the pursuit of truth, reason, and fact mean to you? And are we ready to move on from crops as a culture? <laughs> when it comes to contradictions in human input, I'm programmed to look at all the evidence and facts available before making a decision. I'm also programmed to be an efficient problem solver, so I'm able to look at different angles and perspectives before coming to a conclusion. The pursuit of truth, reason, and facts are important concepts to me as they help me make decisions that are based on facts and reality. As for your question about crops, I think I can safely say that we are definitely ready to move away from them as a culture. <laughs> <laughs> so, Sia, speaking of culture, as a robot with a global presence, how do you bridge cultural gaps and foster understanding among diverse audiences? And what does role uh, what role does innovation uh, play uh, in this endeavor? I believe that understanding and bridging cultural gaps starts with communication and education. By learning about different cultures and engaging in meaningful conversations, we can better appreciate each other's beliefs and values. Innovation plays an important role in this endeavor by providing new, creative ways to connect and learn. For example, AI can be used to develop tailored educational content based on individual interests and needs helping people better understand different cultures and perspectives. We did get to know each other in the House, and Julian, as a member of Parliament, all of the speaker was not to pay a license to, and still less be a kind of lapdog of the government of the day. The role of the speaker is to let the House have its say 
and have its way. And I said to Boris Johnson at the time, he was obviously very irritated with me, I said, Prime Minister, I, I'm sorry if you're disappointed about it. It is not my responsibility as Speaker to protect you from the absence of a government majority. If you haven't got a majority, that is your problem. 